for joining us today. Um, today's YouTube video is about ways that you can put a message onto your cake without actually piping icing onto your cake. So as an instructor, I find um, this is the most difficult part for students. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys four techniques on how you can get a message onto your cake very nice and neat. The first technique that I'm gonna show you guys is how to create a bunting using a ribbon and bamboo skewers. The second technique is showing you how to stamp your message onto a fondant disc and attach it to your cake. And the last two methods are very similar, one of which is hand painting your message onto a gum paste plaque. And then the final one is how you would go about transferring lettering onto your gum paste plaque. So let's go ahead and get started. So the very first technique is how you would go about making a bunting for your cake. So uh, we have quite a few supplies here. The one of which is some ribbon. And this ribbon is 5 8 inch wide. Um, you can also use washi tape. I have a couple different colors of washi tape. And um, again, they're about 5 8 inch wide, similar to the ribbon. And it would pretty much be the same process if you were using the washi tape and the ribbon. Um, other materials that we have here are some fabric scissors again this is going to make it a lot easier to cut the ribbon if you have the fabric scissors um, we also have uh, bamboo bamboo skewers here they're pointed at the bottom you can also use cake dowels as well um, as you can see the dowels are a lot wider or thicker than the bamboo skewer so that's one thing to keep in mind um, a few other things that you need to create a bunting would be some baker's twine and I'm just showing a couple different styles here one is a more neutral pack and the other one is a more colorful pack and what I've done here is gone ahead and cut maybe about a um, 30 inch strip for my message and then finally what I have here um, are some letters so just some nice glittery letters here from the craft store uh, I have gold and then I have silver these are also available in other bright colors as well so what I'm gonna do is I am going to start and use my silver letters to create my bunty so the message that I'm gonna make today is good luck so to do this what you want to do is you want to take your ribbon or your washi tape and start by cutting some strips that are about the same size. So here I have maybe about three inches or so. So I'm gonna take my fabric scissors and very carefully, but it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, I'm gonna cut a strip. And so for the words good luck, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out as many strips as I need to make that saying. So at this point, we've gone ahead and cut out all of our ribbons. Um, they're about the same size. Again, they don't need to be perfect because we're going to end up uh, trimming the tops and bottoms of them. So as we work with our ribbon, what we also need to have is um, a roll of permanent double stick tape. If you are using the washi tape, you do not need to use the double stick tape because the washi tape is tape. So at this point, after we have cut our ribbons to size, we're gonna take just a small piece of the double stick tape and we are going to place it gently onto our ribbon and we are going to fold it over nice and evenly. And we're gonna repeat this step for all of our ribbons. So when we're done, they all should look like this and they all should have a little bit of a loop at the top. Then do all of those now. So at this point, 
we have all of our ribbons double stick taped together and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our letters and I'm gonna use my silver ones here instead of my gold and we are going to place the letters onto the ribbons um, to spell out our message so the message for today is good luck so as you're doing this um, you just want to make sure that you place the letters on pretty much as straight as you can get them and then when you do it you don't necessarily want to place it in the center you just want to come up above center just a little bit so here has I have my G go ahead and put on my O and again you just want to make sure they're lined up for the most part and centered on the ribbons So we have our message, good luck, here. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our baker's twine, and remember we've cut out about 30 to 36 inches of the twine. Um, and what we're gonna start to do is we are going to thread our message onto our twine. we have our message on to our baker's twine good luck and then at this point what we want to do is we want to go through with our fabric scissors and we want to clean up this bottom edge now you can cut your ribbon into a V um, or you can just cut it as straight as you can at the bottom to have it finish like that um, you can also cut it the opposite way uh, my favorite way to cut it is just to go ahead and cut um, the traditional ribbon shape out of the bottom so just take that there okay and so it should make a nice clean cut like so again it's very important for you to use fabric scissors to do this part because the fabric scissors are a lot sharper than your typical scissors and they provide a much cleaner line. So at this point we have our saying good luck on our baker's twine on our ribbons and our ribbons are cut nice and neatly at the bottom um, to finish up this bunting what we want to do is we want to take either our bamboo sticks or um, our skewers or our dowels here and we want to attach the baker's twine to the bamboo skewers um, or the dowels. I prefer to use the bamboo skewers because they have the pointed end and then they also have the flat end. So what I typically do is I take my baker's twine and I attach it to the top with, um, with the flat end. And I attach it by tying it on. So I've placed the bamboo skewer over the top of my baker's twine and what I typically like to do is go ahead and just tie a knot here and I do this a couple times so just a really basic knot here just tie it kind of tight 
Um, and then I tie another knot, again, just to help it secure itself to the top. Okay, so have a double knot here at the very top. And then what I also do is I tie it almost like a shoestring. So I make a loop um, and then I make another loop here on the side. When you are making your knot, you just want to make sure you have enough space on this side. I have about five, five to six inches here. Okay, so I'm making a loop, making my other loop. And then when I have my two loops, I just tie them together. Again, just making sure I make those loops kind of large. Makes it easier to tie a knot and then just kind of pull. Now, let me do that again. And so we have a nice couple loops here. Now, when you have your loops like this, it makes it easier to kind of push and pull here to kind of clean up, clean them up a little bit, bring the scale down some. Um, so again, just nice and dainty like. All right. And then you do the same on the opposite side. Again, I'm gonna push my saying here kind of to the center. And then what I'm gonna do is repeat the process on the other side with the bamboo skewer. Again, just tying two knots to secure. And before I secure it, I just want to make sure I have a decent amount of distance in between my two skewers so that I can place these into my cake and have, um, have it look nice and uniform. So I think that's an enough distance there. So I'm going to tie another knot here. Okay. And so the double knot is here. And again, I am going to make two loops. Come in just a little bit. Okay. And tie those around into a knot. Okay. And then we're just going to Tighten those together. And again, we're going to repeat the same process where we um, push and pull on the ribbons to make sure that the loops are the length that we need. Again, to just make it nice and dainty, just like so. So we have our bunting here and ready to go. A final step is just kind of clean it up a little bit. Um, take our fabric scissors and we are going to cut down our baker's twine on either side. Again, just to make them uniform for the most part. And here's our message. Good luck. So our next segment is how we would go about stamping our message into fondant. So a couple of things about working with fondant in general that you need to know is that when you're working with it, sometimes it's 
tends to stick to your hand. So what you want to do is take a little bit of all vegetable shortening. Uh, I like to put mine on the spoon and you want to get just a thin layer on your hands while you're working with the fondant and it's going to prevent the fondant from sticking to your hands. Um, if you are wearing the latex free food safe gloves, um, you don't you have to use the shortening as much because it tends not to stick to um, your hands in this manner. So what I like to do after I've pulled at my fondant and it's nice and pliable, I like to roll it into a ball I always start with a ball when I go to roll my fondant. And then what I like to do is I like to flatten it with my hand a bit. Whenever we are working on our surface, and if you don't have a mat to work on, I recommend getting a piece of parchment paper large enough um, to accommodate your workspace. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a dusting pouch and lightly dust our surface um, with either powdered sugar or cornstarch or you can do a 50 50 mix powder sugar and cornstarch and what that's going to do is it's going to prevent our fondant from sticking to the surface so here i just placed it down in the middle kind of flatten it a bit and what i'm doing now is i'm taking my nine inch rolling pin and i'm going to roll my fondant from the center out um, just a review on the supplies that we need for this segment. We have our fondant, we have our nine inch rolling pin. It's sold with um, purple guy rings and pink guy rings. We only use the purple guy rings for this part. Um, the purple guys are about an eighth of an inch thickness once we roll out. We also need a cutter of some sort, which I have that here. Um, we also need to have um, a message stamp here. And this is a really neat one that I got um, at amazon.com. Um, and I have the message best wishes stamped into, inserted into it. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put these letters on. Um, so we'll get to that in just a second. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna take my nine inch rolling pin and I'm gonna start to roll. A Again, I roll from the center out. So I start in the center and roll away from myself and toward myself here. And if you get these little bubbles, that's fine. What you want to do then is take a bamboo skewer and just kind of poke there. And that is going to have those bubbles kind of disappear. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And then I'm just gonna roll. Okay. If it gets a little wrinkly during the, through the center, don't worry too much about it. You can take that and just roll it out nice and smooth. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutter and I like to use the metal cutters because the edges are a lot sharper than the plastic cutters are. From here, I'm just going to roll up my extra fondant. Okay. And so here I have my extra fondant and what I'm going to do to store it is I'm going to roll it into a ball. Okay. So once I have it into a ball like this, I'm going to take a little bit of my shortening and I'm going to just lightly rub it over the ball and I'm going to take my plastic and I'm going to store my fondant in my plastic like so. And for a little bit of extra protection, I would take this and put it into a Ziploc bag to keep the air out of it. So here I'm going to lift up my cutter and then I have my shape. So from here, what I want to do is just make sure that it can lift up a bit. Here, I'm going to lift it, put just a little bit more powdered sugar down. Again, that's to keep it from sticking to the surface. At this point, we're ready to take our message press and 
press it into our fondant but before I show you guys how you would go about doing that I want to show you um, some of the features of this letterpress holder. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is it's open on both ends and so that allows us to easily slide the characters in and out. Um, so here I have the words best wishes and so I have my B-E-S-T on and then I have the words for wishes on there except for my S. So to slide it in I just go to this open end and I just gently push the S there and slide it up against the other letters. Now before you press the words into your um, fondant piece that's been cut out, you just want to make sure everything is nice and straight so everything looks pretty good. And at this point I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, make sure that it's centered on my piece of fondant. And it's nice and centered and so I just sat it there and at this point, I'm going to just apply some gentle pressure and really push that message into my piece of fondant. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and gently lift it out. And it warped it just a tiny bit, but that's totally okay. Just gently push that kind of back in place. And so we have the message, best wishes. So at this point, we have our our plaque and um, it looks a little plain but if we want to spice it up a little bit we can use this fondant tool here um, to make some stitching patterns on the outside and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use this edge here to do that there's also a spikier edge again it just gives a different look and so what I'm going to do is just go here kind of close to the edge and just use the tool to make some gentle indentations. Okay, so when I get around to a corner, I just make sure that I'm very careful and I almost just kind of press it in instead of rolling it along. And again, that's going to make it a little more uniform as I go along. Now, if I have straighter sides, I'm able to just go ahead and press it in on the straighter sides. So again, you'll see me here just kind of pressing it into the edge where I have tight curves. And again, along the tight curves, but when I have a straighter edge, I just go ahead and gently roll it into that side. Okay, right here at that bottom. Okay, and so, here is our tag, all ready to go and ready to put onto our cake. Now you can apply this to a buttercream cake very easily. Um, you don't need to put any extra water on the back of it. Just take it and carefully place it onto your buttercream cake. If you are applying this to a fondant cake, what you'll need to do is gently lift it up. I have it in your hand, flip it over and you'll see the powdered sugar here, that's no big deal and just take a little bit of water, clean water here, and apply a little bit of water to the back. You don't need to put it on the entire back side, and then you gently place it onto your cake. Okay. All right, so our second to last and final techniques have to do with creating um, a gum paste plaque and that is um, just a plaque that we're either going to cut out um, using a cutter or we're going to cut um, just freehand using these two fondant tools here. Um, so gum paste, you can find that in your local hobby store. It is different from fondant. Um, the advantage with gum paste is that when you go to use it, it dries very, very hard once you put it into the shape that you want it to be in. So whenever we're using fondant or gum paste, as a reminder, what we want to have handy if we're not using gloves um, is a little bit of all vegetable shortening here. Uh, and I like to put mine on a spoon, again, to keep me from digging in and out of the container. And the shortening is going to prevent the fondant or the gum paste from sticking to our fingers. So what I do is just, I get a little bit and I put a thin layer all over my hands. 
And like I said a moment ago, if you are using gloves to do this, um, you don't necessarily have to use the, the Crisco. Um, it's not going to stick to your hands as much. So I have um, a ball here of gum paste. And what I like to do is kind of warm it up in my hands and squeeze it, pull it apart, twist it. And again, you want it to be the consistency of Play-Doh. And it's gonna look almost like chewing gum a bit as you pull it, but you want it to be nice and pliable as you're working with it. Um, a couple other tools that I have in my space right now is I have a nine inch rolling pin here. Um, it's typically sold with a couple different colors of uh, guides, the pink guides and the purple guides. The purple guides are about an eighth of an inch thickness and so that's what we want to have on our rolling pin. Also handy I have my dusting pouch. Um, if you do not have a mat that you can work on go ahead and take a piece of parchment paper to serve as your nice smooth surface. Um, I also have a metal cutter here um, and then I have my rolling cutter and a couple of other um, fondant tools here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gum paste and I am going to use a little bit of shortening and I'm going to work it into a ball. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it some. When you're working on your surface, just make sure you dust it. Your dusting pouch. My dusting pouch is filled with powdered sugar today. You can also use cornstarch or you can use a 50-50 mix of powdered sugar or cornstarch. So here I've set my gum paste down on my surface and I have my rolling pin here with my purple guides on and I'm going to start to roll this. Whenever you're rolling out fondant or gum paste you want to start in the very center and roll out. Okay, so I'm just rolling here. Okay, and so when I get to this point I like to rotate it 90 degrees and then just continue to roll from the center. Okay, be mindful that your guides don't roll over your gum paste. Okay. All right. And so we have our nice uniform surface here. So I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, my cutter here and I am going to gently push down and I'm going to lift it right up and so this will be the plaque that I put my special lettering on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit this off to the side and just kind of let that um, let that dry and then the final thing I want to do is I'm going to cut a plaque out of this area right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my roller and just make a line here. And it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. Okay. Because we want to give it a little bit of variation. And I am going to go in and I'm going to cut another line right here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but at this point, I'm going to straighten it up a little bit. So, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, line it up this way, and just cut. You can also use a ruler for this part as well to make it a little bit more precise. Okay, and so at this point what we want to do is we want to do something with the very edges here. So what I like to do is just go ahead and kind of square those up a bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to cut it one more time. 
or a couple more times. And again, if it's weird and doesn't seem like it's straight, just go ahead and just cut a little bit more until you get it to where you want it to be. All right, okay. All right, and so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fondant cutter tool here and I'm just gonna cut here into the sides, just making a V shape, very similar to the V shape we made on our bunting. Yeah. So again, this is a very sharp tool. Be careful as you use it. And so here on the edge, I'm just gonna use my fingers to point that edge up a bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the opposite on the other side. Okay, so just very carefully. Just clean that up there. All right, okay. And again, same thing with my fingers, just go through and point it again. So here, we have our extra gum paste that we didn't use, and that's totally fine. The way you wanna store this is just make sure that you roll it into a ball. It's important to store it immediately. Then you also wanna take a little bit of shortening just a thin layer, rub it all over that ball. Again, form it, okay? Roll it all over the ball. And then just store it in plastic. Make sure it's airtight. For a little bit more protection, you can take your gum paste and place it into a Ziploc bag, um, and that'll also help to keep the air out and keep it from drying. So at this point, we have this plaque here, and then we also have our ribbon plaque that we've just cut from our cutting tools. All right, so for our next segment, I'm gonna show you guys how you would go about hand painting your message onto uh, the gum paste plaque. So just remember, this is the little plaque that we made um, just a moment ago. And what we're gonna do is we are going to take our black gel paste color and a very, very, very fine paintbrush, and we are going to hand paint a message onto our plaque. So again, this is a technique that you can use in case you um, mess up this plaque. You can go ahead and start over again or you can flip it over and use the back side. So again, it takes a little bit more pressure off of you um, as opposed to piping icing directly onto your cake. So as far as supplies go, what you want to have is a little dish here that is going to help you to contain um, your black gel paste color. Um, or whatever color that you want to use. Again, you want to have a little bit of clean water handy um, to clean your brush as needed. You want to use a very, very, very fine uh, paintbrush here. And also, when you go to use your gel color, if you are trying to get a really nice black, you can use this uh, Color Right Black for, um, for your lettering. Again, this is made by Wilton and it gives a really nice black um, and no funny colors behind it. And so what you wanna do is you wanna take, a, take your black and just put a little bit into your tray. A little bit goes a long way. And from here what you wanna do is take your brush out of the water Make sure you get it to a nice fine point. And what you're gonna do is get 
that gel color onto your paintbrush. Again, just make sure that it's pointed and fine. And so at this point, what you wanna do is you wanna line your plaque up with your hand, and we are just gonna freehand right over this. Okay, you guys, for this final segment, I am going to show you a technique that's very similar to the previous technique. Um, we are actually going to transfer special lettering onto our gum paste plaque. Um, this technique is a really good one to know for you guys out there who are um, kind of nervous about freehanding lettering onto your gum paste plaque. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So what I've done is I've taken the Waltograph font and typed in the name David. I printed it out on paper in black here. And what I'm gonna do is with my number two pencil, I'm gonna start the transfer. One very important thing I want you guys to know is that um, pencil lead is non-toxic. However, I don't recommend eating um, the gum paste plaque where we've used the pencil lead. So again, I say to you, this is not an edible plaque. So if you do this technique um, for a cake and you're giving it to someone, just let them know um, not to eat this portion of the cake. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our wording here that's on our, um, on our paper, and we're gonna flip it over. And then we're gonna take the number two pencil and we're going to Gently shade the back. And this is where we're gonna use this to transfer the pencil lid. Okay, so make sure that we've completely covered up the entire word and that we have. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our gum paste plaque into place, and then we're gonna take our wording, and we are going to gently place it over our plaque. And from here, we're just gonna hold down gently, and we're going to use our number two pencil to Give us a guide And we've written it out and here we have it on our plaque. It's very faint, but it is there. And from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our very fine brush and we're gonna take our black from the previous technique. And here we already have it in our tray. And we are going to paint over 
where we've transferred that ink. our lettering transferred onto our plaque. Okay. And that concludes all the take thieks. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe.